episode number 161 with Andrew Peeper. Poker Podcast. This is Steve Barton. This is Mike Snyderman. How the hell are you doing, Mikey? Uh, you know, as we were talking, if uh, if I hated money, I'd be I'd be ecstatic. But other than that, <laughs> all my ship coins yeah. tanking. I lose 4K in two days on the American sites. That's kind of hard to do. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, not really. They had a lot of big buy-ins. I mean, even yesterday there was a couple hundred. On the Monday there was a couple hundred Ks in ACR, but. Ah, uh, shit show there, but uh, alas, Carlos yeah. is Car- Carlos is back in town. That'll solve everything. Oh, there you go. That that'll be some run good right there. Um, I don't know if you saw me tweet out yesterday. I said uh, for my Twitch, I said um, my internet uh, tournament uh, retirement party. <laughs> and much like I'm not going, I think I'm really. St- I, I actually still have like four or five hundred on there. Um. But I really think I'm done with it. Um, I just don't know. Let's put it this way. I, I can't blame it. I mean, the amount of money I lost on, I'm down like 35000 plus on ACR in two years. I mean, that's just absurd. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm allowed what, like a bad beat story. What do we say? Every two months? Uh, well, I think it was seven weeks, but that's close enough, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I got it in. Which tournament was? It was one of the 100Ks or one of the, it might have been the half million. I get it in. With pocket jacks on a nine, on a jack nine four flop, That's uh, a good hit. and with two other players, and I finished in third place. One oh. guy hit one guy hit the, the one guy hit the king on the turn for his set, and then the other guy, the queen jack guy, um, uh, river to straight, I believe. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so it's bad there. But watching Carlos, Carlos made a deep run in the hundred k on. Um, Ignition, which he has mm-hmm. twice in my house, um, once like in 20th and once like in 30th. But watching him work, I realize how far I'm, be- I'm behind. Just, uh, well, there's a lot of things. I, I mean, I should not be watching TV when I'm playing or having shit like that. So, you know, total concentration. But beyond that, uh, yeah, just his approach. And like he uses the Assassinato HUD, which is pretty, pretty good, I got to say. We're having Alex on again soon, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. That, that's not a that's not a promotional thing, but it gives you like all sorts of stuff, like the previous hands this guy played, the bet sizing he used when his hands showed down, and um, yeah, just another level of competence and hard work is on display there. So if I'm going to do tournaments, that's going to be going back to stay. You know, even last night I made a couple shove fold errors, which I thought I knew um, pretty well. So if I'm going to uh, do online poker tournaments, and I don't think I am. It's going to mean that uh, I have to go back to studying a lot. You know, I I may want to get that Assassinato HUD. I I've got a pretty kick-ass HUD, I think, and I'm getting really good at uh, at reading it. You know, there there is kind of an art to that too, because you'll get in a spot and you'll be like, okay, what's uh, how often is this guy see betting the flop? How often is he betting the turn? You know, and if you see. 80% on the flop and then 30% on the turn, then, you know, you just got to float the guy and see if he bets the turn. Right. But to get that information in a timely manner, you know how you're always talking about game flow? If right. you, you know, take too long to call on the flop and then you kind of wait to see what he does on the turn because you ended up taking 15 seconds instead of four, it now changes things. And that right. those, those stats may not be accurate. And I'm, I'm getting better at, just looking at the numbers, picking it up, and then firing on it, and not having that delay like I used to, which is uh, which is nice. But the assassin of that Carlos has talked about that. I I, I probably need yeah, I'm to sure Carlos will give would uh, talk about it and give you a, a mini tutorial, see if it's something you could use. But yeah, yeah, well, you know the other thing that you know Carlos doesn't do more than six tables at once, and I think at one point on Sunday I was doing fifteen tables. Oh my god! Wow. So, um, in my mind. And I never timed out or misclicked. I mean, so I, I can get things done. And, um, yeah, there was one point where I did use my whole time bank for one tournament where, like, late in the tournament, I had a couple big decisions to make. And I'm like, I, 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 you know, I had, like, 10 seconds. Um, 
but uh, I don't know. Anyways, that, those are my two revelations. Live tournaments are just are absolutely stupid. I mean, like the, the overall, they're profitable, but y- you can just yeah, it's got to be with ex- it's got to be with your play money. It can't be with your bankroll, in my opinion. And yeah. online tournaments, uh, if we have my my lessons of the day, uh, ACR is I don't know if it's rigged. I mean, well, they they just had the scandal with the bots. We know about that. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, and just overall, you you've just got to be doing a shitload of work, I think, to stay on top of shit. But anyways, those are my thoughts for the day, Stevie. Who do we have for a guest today? We have Andrew Peeper, returning guest. Uh, last time we talked to him, um, well, he went out to Vegas, basically started grinding one two and and two three. Uh, live cash was working his way up to a two five. Uh, put up some impressive hourlies, uh, over twenty bucks an hour. And, um, you know, just at those live cash games and, um, yeah. And then he got hit with a ton of bricks and his, uh, almost his entire bankroll got, uh, swiped, um, identity theft. And so I'm curious, he was debating going back to work. He might've had a job lined up. I'm curious to see, uh, see what he's up to and how he's been able to recover. How was his money taken again quickly before? Was it like some sort of Western Union thing? I forget. Um, it was basically he hit, he'd he been traveling so much that he – the impression I got was he basically reduced the number of security clearances that he needed to access his money to the point to where uh, when his when his dough got stolen, uh, the banks pretty much said, well, you know, all these alerts and everything that you didn't sign up for, there's nothing we can do. Um, and you know, he was talking to a lawyer to see if he could get his money back. It wasn't looking good. Um, but, uh, we'll see. Right. Okay. Let's get, let's, uh, let's talk to Andrew. I look forward to that. Are we, uh, okay. is he available? Is he available now? Yes. Let's bring him on. Word. Want to grow your bankroll so you can play the games you should be playing? Before your next session, enjoy 10 minutes of listening to a relaxing meditation tape of the type of game you're about to play. It will give you an edge over your opponents who have not done so, and watch your bankroll grow. Elliot Rowe has all the MP3s, cash, tournaments, live, online. I have them all, because I believe in them and I know they work. This is the next step in poker, the Mindset Advantage by Elliot Rowe. Click on the link in the show notes, it'll take you straight there. Use the code HUPOKER and score yourself a discount. Elliot Rowe, Mindset Advantage. Andrew Peeper. Hey. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> good. How are you guys? Good, good. I love your little note there. You say, uh, how's, the, uh, how's the homeless guy set up in the Starbucks parking lot ready before homeowner Mike? <laughs> 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 so we're still in our Prius. <laughs> we are good 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 to hear <laughs> and how uh, where, where are you coming from are you still in vegas or are you out on the east coast uh yes yeah yeah i'm still in vegas okay all right you still grinding the one two the two three uh yes sir and still still grinding it out and what's uh what's the latest with uh i know last time we talked to you you had a uh you got hit with a ton of bricks uh when it comes to your pain. <laughs> right. That was two that was two tons. Two tons. Yes. Yeah, that was two that was that was two tons of bricks. Yes. Yeah, um so as far as the uh the bank itself is concerned, they're they're kind of looking at like a closed issue and they're not really uh they're not really going to do anything more uh for me. Um However, there's like some light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, um, there's like a like a plus like fifty bi- fifty million dollar plus uh, class action lawsuit currently against uh, Western Union for scams just like this over the past few years. So oh. I started that application process, and um, so hopefully down the road something will happen. But class actions, especially like sizable ones like this, are not uh, timely. So right, yeah, well. Okay. Just keep on, and if it if it if it shows up, just think of it as uh, you'll think of it as a windfall, and not getting your money back. I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah, kind of the same uh, 
Same thing as when uh, poker stars in full tilt went under. <laughs> if I get back, great. If not, well, it's gone. <laughs> well, what's the temperature like in Vegas now? Is this the time of year where all of a sudden we start uh, moving into the heat, or is that right now is the actual? Um, yeah, the uh, the actually actually the past few weeks it's been r- kind of cold. They've uh, dropped down in like the 30s and stuff. Um, but now it's starting. Now it looks like the the weather is starting to pick back up now, and it's like the uh, lows in the 50s and mids in the 70s. So it's like perfect weather right now before the before it really starts to heat up. Okay. Oh, that's I, I'm sorry. You, the, you your Prius is different than Carlos's van, and then you have temperature control. Right. Yeah. Without the uh, yeah, without uh, having to uh, run the engine all night. Climate controlled environment. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, what um, uh, what have you been playing lately? Where have you Where have you been playing? Are you Are you Did you have to drop back down to to one two or? Yeah. Yeah. Still playing. Uh. Yeah. Just drop down. Uh. Playing pretty low. Um. At the end of. From the year was going uh, fairly well for me. Um, not like great, but not bad. Just like steadily profitable, maintaining like a good hourly. And then, and that was all fine up until Super Bowl weekend. Uh, and then the end of Super Bowl weekend, uh, I just got like, uh, just got wrecked and just been on the a downswing since then uh, that I really couldn't afford. Uh, and, uh, so that that really sucked, um, and then uh, so yeah, the roll is getting like dangerously low, and then um, I uh, I went to the uh, I got to go to the American Poker Awards uh, the other week, which is really neat. But then uh, like a quarter, my car broke down like a quarter mile away from the awards, so that presented like a whole new set of problems for me, and. Um, Ended up like having like five hundred dollars worth of repairs uh, to the car, but then the good news uh, there was since I was stuck in LA, I just played poker at the Commerce and that went well, and so uh, ended up like up seven hundred for that, which so it was still a profitable trip, even with the car issues. So um, yeah, uh, that was good, and then I uh, got back to Vegas, and then um, they have uh, right now. A f- Flamingo, uh, in, uh, Harris, Harris is running this 100-hour uh, promotion where if you get 100 hours before uh, April 1st, they, they you get entry into this big free roll tournament. It's like a 80 plus k. It's a 80, 80k plus prize pool, and uh, top 30 spots pay. I think the the top the the the, the bottom spots only pay out. I think it's like some entries into like some 365 events and stuff. But uh, up top, there's there's five main event seats, which is pretty nice. Nice, wow! So, nice. Uh, take that, take that, sell, sell half half the action, and then you know for five k or something, and then you. Uh... Yeah, that's that's uh, kind of exactly what my thoughts were. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is so there I any could, way? This is what w- the uh, my casino started spreading um, two five. And it, right now there there was only there was only two three and five five. Right, and, I was listening to your to the oh, one okay. the, the other day. Yeah. Um, just curious, like, is the only way to like determine your hourly? This is probably a stupid question. Is to play a lot of hours at a game, or are you at a point where you can step into a game? Like, my God, if it was like this every day, you know, with this buy in, with this drop, with this player pool, this is what I could make. Have you played enough poker? You think where you have a good sense? of your hourly even before you put in a large volume? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't really know. Uh, no, I wouldn't say I'm to that point yet, or at least I, I don't think about it like that. Uh, I just think of, oh, wow, this is a really good game, and you know I, I shouldn't leave until like this guy leaves or goes broke or whatever. But yeah, uh, I don't really – I haven't really looked at games – yeah, and to to see, oh wow, I should definitely like have like an an assign a, a assign a game with a with an X amount of hourly. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Just you know, if if game A is better than game B, you play game A, obviously. Right. Yeah. Game selection is uh, definitely one of the one of the pros that you have here in Vegas with with all the different rooms, and um, yeah, I think is uh, uh, one that. A lot of people tend to overlook. They just think, "Oh, I'm gonna go play at Bellagio tonight," and they end up playing at Bellagio regardless of if the games are good or bad or if there's better ones running elsewhere. Have you 
dabbled any in the uh, in the crypto world uh, lately? In a, yeah, a, a little bit. Uh, I have. We're, uh, we're like we're like a Harley Davidson gang. We're like, where's your bike? Right. <laughs> like, we're, we're like, Tell us about your crypto, dude. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the bar. <laughs> yes, how's your Satoshi? <laughs> <laughs> what bags you carrying? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> What's your portfolio look like? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really uh, uh, keep. I'm just so busy nowadays with. Uh, uh, the the vlog and um, uh, grinding hours and all this other stuff that uh, comes with that that uh, I keep pretty busy to um, to uh, I don't really uh, have like a day to day knowledge of what's going on in crypto so I have like a little bit of Bitcoin and uh, a little bit of uh, Litecoin but nothing uh, nothing substantial it just kind of like sits in the wallet uh, and stays there um, I don't really do and then uh, sort of. Then when I do play online, which is not really that frequently, uh, maybe like once a week, every other week, uh, not a lot of volume online right currently. Um, the, the, yeah, then, then that's what I use it for is just uh, just for ease of uh, access for on and off poker sites. Yeah, pulling it on and off. Yeah. Well, Steve, oh, yeah. He, he's he, he's willing to ride bitch on another Harley. That's a, that's good enough start, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> At least, he, yes. at least he's aware of crypto. He, he doesn't mock us like a lot of these old bastards at 1-2 if we, if we we discuss crypto with another player there. But, uh, I know, I know. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, Beanie, Beanie Baby's a really, really uh, big trend too, guys. You know how much money they have <laughs> 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 heard that before. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That was not... Uh, well, uh, hopefully, crypto's not Beanie Babies, but anyways, let, leave that depressing thought behind. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, I started uh, day trading them uh, a little bit. I'll watch and see which ones have gone down or up, and uh, it was kind of cool. I went out and had uh, breakfast the other day, and I sold a bunch of Ripple, um, and then by the time I was uh, finished and paying the bill, then I rebought it again. And uh, I ended up getting an extra hundred uh, Ripple coin out of it, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> Just by buying, uh, you know, nice. selling it high and then buying it low again. Um, yeah, it was that was that was pretty slick. <laughs> and, uh, I thought, you know, well, it makes you feel like a genius when it goes well like that, but then you just feel like a total idiot when you sell it and then it just keeps climbing. <laughs> right. <Oops. laughs> My bad. Are you other? Uh, are there any other good? This is something I've. I guess you do listen to the show, Andrew, and you heard um, the changes that happened in my casino. All all bad for me. They got rid of the free food. Right. They cha- They ch- they changed the drawings. They started taking a dollar pre flop, and now they had the one good thing they improved. They had this rake back program. I don't know if we talked about this last week, Steve, but this is a killer for me. It the, if you play a hundred hours, you get five hundred bucks. So and so basically five dollar rake back. And I was committed to doing two hundred hours a month. The five five game would break, and I would go play two three for an hour or two, just to get you know at an hour. But now even that's changed, where it's three bucks an hour now. Right. Um. So yeah, I added all this up, and it's like fifteen hundred dollars a month less money that I'm making there, which happens to be the exact amount extra that I, all my rent and everything costs for moving. <laughs> but um. Are you are you hyper aware of everything between the drop and um, any little changes they have in promotions or rake back? Oh right, yeah, definitely, yeah, that's definitely something I keep uh, a close eye on. And for as far as um, uh, d- yeah, rake and then d- uh, promo drops and things uh, like that, um, buy in- buy in structures, and then um, something a lot of uh, most of all all the. Uh, all the I don't, I don't know if I talked about this last time, but the um, a lot of uh, the Caesars casinos have all uh, adopted uh, this uh, two except for Caesars actual Caesars Palace um, have all started spreading a two three uh, in addition to one two, and they are and they usually offer like uh, an an extra dollar an hour and uh, double tier credits for playing that game, and usually it's a Usually it's a it's um it's a higher higher buy-in uh, structure for that. It's like two hundred to five hundred or two hundred six hundred some places. Two three with a six hundred dollar buy-in is pretty nice game right there. I like that. Yeah, sound of that. Not at all. 
Yeah, two hundred bigs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. And then um, sometimes those games can be pretty good. Um, at some rooms, they have they're really struggling to get it to spread. Like uh, Flamingo is offering it, but I don't think they they've been offering it for I think uh, almost a month now, and they. I don't think they've ever had one single game uh, go just because like Flamingo has this weekly free roll where you only need in only need uh, 13 hours to qualify for their I think it's like a 10k uh, price pool free roll and then and they also have a lot of two four as well so it's like a big time like local casino and a lot of people just like to buy in short for 100 bucks and watch on their iPad to grind the hours and the two three is a minimum 200. So I think the, I think the higher buy-in kind of uh, discourages the, the locals from buying. buying so do you actually, <laughs> do you actually calculate um, the specific value of that, that tournament? I mean, like a lot of people probably don't even show up for it who play 13 hours. Right. Yeah. The that's, 10K, yeah that's something like I, 10 K prize pool. Your, your value from that might be right. 200 bucks plus, which is pretty good for if you played just thirteen hours, you're getting a, well, you're getting a massive rate back. You're you've played yeah. rates basically. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. This is a that's a, actually a really good point that I wanted to talk about. Uh, something that I, I brought up um, recently to some some poker peeps of mine is uh, yeah, there's like some different free rolls in Vegas like that. Harris one uh, is obviously a special one, and then yeah, this uh, this flamingo one. This, they have a weekly one, and then they have uh, then they have a monthly one as well. Which is a uh, their monthly one is a uh, I think it's a forty k price pool, and there's they pay out like 30, 30, 40 spots, and there's a, like a top three spots like third is third third and fourth are three grand, second's five grand, and first is ten grand, um, for that. So what? yeah, for, that's for seventy hours for the month. So yeah, I was uh, so I, I'd taken a look at my um. Uh, my uh, my hourly and and cat, uh, ROI in these uh, in these daily tournaments that I talked about last time, and I was like, man, I'm like I'm crushing these like uh, so well. If I'm beating the rake at these and and doing that. I wonder I wonder what would be what if uh, if any of these uh, free rolls would have um, uh, decent value for me. So I so I made it. So I took a day and just like made a spreadsheet on um, on every just wrote up every single free roll going on in Las Vegas and um, and put in the prize pool the uh, places paid the average field size and hours required and uh, what day is on etc like that and then just try to like ca- calculate uh, my uh, expected value in hourly um, uh, in addition to playing in that room and so yeah so now I've um, so now I'm playing uh, a lot at Flamingo and uh, for their for their weekly one and their and their um, and their monthly one and because it's only like it's 13 hours to get the to get the to get the weekly free roll and then to get the 70 hours in a month uh, it's uh, like four and a half hour more hours a week to uh, to go ahead and get the 70 hours so been doing that uh, as well. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a, a lot. Of, well, that's yeah, that's great, I and mean, there's a lot of value to doing that. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There wasn't, there wasn't really. This was kind of like some. I like I just made the spreadsheet and stuff on my own. Just kind of did my own calculations because there wasn't like a lot to uh, to look up for for calculating, um, you know, your your value and stuff and free rules because it's, it's not really something that's co- talked about as far as. Uh, you know, not too many professional players play free rolls, and usually they're just people with no money and uh, you know, and just uh, buying in online and things like that. But yeah, I mean, for for this, like, there's actually some you know, you could actually add add like quite a bit to your hourly um, yeah, without like really giving up too much because there's not it's not like playing at Flamingo or playing at Harris is gonna uh, sacrifice a lot of uh, BB an hour. Yeah. What um, have you have you found that there's like better times to play, like for example, a Friday night is a lot better than a you know Wednesday morning. Oh yeah, definitely, um, for sure. So, so like Mondays and Tuesdays are are generally the slowest days for poker. So I will. So usually those are more more so study days for me and. Uh, watch some training videos or um, do some work on Poker Snowy or Flopzilla and. Um, or you know, finish an audiobook, whatever it is, and then, uh, then yeah, usually as it gets closer to the weekend, then my hours uh, end up ramping up uh, towards that. 
I was you, I was thinking it'd be you really nice more at night than in the mornings or more in the afternoons. Uh, uh, yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of. Um, usually, I wake up around um, around nine or ten or so. Go to the gym, and then have lunch, and then do a few hours edit work on the vlog, and then uh, after that, then just check Bravo and uh, evaluate from there. Okay. okay. I think it's probably Vegas is less predictable than any place else. Like just about every other card room, you know, Fridays, Friday nights and Saturdays are the best because that's when the weekend players come in. Probably Vegas. This is just my guess. I mean, it's can be there can be a convention in town and ten guys. Right. Go to the, exactly. I would think, I would think it's a bit more arbitrary than. Most yeah, guys. it really is. Yeah, I was I was I was I was thinking it'd be it'd be really nice if uh if like some if some software guy was able to to like attach uh attach a program to Bravo and then have it track um have it track just automatically like when 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 games pop up and just like run it for a week and you know and then see see like the a graph of uh you know right. different spikes <laughs> for different times yeah um so do, how about the uh, the tournaments the free rolls i'm looking at um like the win series coming up do you, would you ever take a shot in one of these $400 tournaments i guess because of your bankroll that would be that's kind of a big investment right Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For I know they got as, the I know they got the like the best rake and a lot of a lot of good things about those tournaments and big guarantees and. Um, yeah. Yeah. The win is the win uh, does do uh, really really uh, does run a lot of really good tournaments. Yeah. The rake is usually some of the lowest in town. Um, they have big. Uh, most of their they're incorporating a lot of the big blind ante into theirs. Uh, now, so uh, most of their tournaments are that, which I like. And then, uh, yeah, then it's just a really nice room, and um, you know, it's a really nice casino to to play at. Um, do they have Do they have like satellites into their four and five hundred dollar tournaments? Is that something that exists, or usually it's only one Ks and above? Or you yeah, they don't. Uh, yeah, okay. to, usually to this to their one Ks and things like that. Um, the Heartland Poker Tour is coming to uh, the Westgate of all uh, poker places in Vegas, and uh, the, and uh, I played. I went to last year. I went to St. Louis for for one of their for, for one of their stops, and I really like I really like theirs because they they, they pretty much for every single event, what, even if it's like a three hundred dollar event or something, they'll run a satellite to it, and they most of the satellites are also one in five pay instead of one in ten. Um, so that, yeah, they have like they have, they run uh, pretty much satellites to like every event that they run, and their satellites are pretty good as well. So um, yeah, like last year I went ended up um, I I got into the Survivor tournament, uh, which is like a the thousand error on um, ignition. It was like a fifteen hundred error, essentially what it was, and it was uh, I think it was a three sixty five buy in I think, and uh, I I satellited into eighty for eighty eighty bu- eighty five bucks, and then uh, ended up winning that. So. Twenty five nice. bucks instead of fifteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You use a HUD on uh, ignition. Uh, I do. Uh, for, for yeah, for you know what it's worth. Just you know, sometimes it's pretty useful where you're at one table for a while, and then some for then some tournaments. Tournaments like okay, we're gonna move you like every other orbit. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. it, uh, I was playing one last night, and it came in really handy when we got down to two tables because one of the guys um, I played with at at the very beginning, and I had like a hundred hands on him, and then he was on my right uh, when we got down uh, to yeah. two, two tables. So that's where I, I find it really comes in handy because you're not going to remember number seventeen, but <laughs> when it shows up on the HUD that he's a forty three thirty three, you're like. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I got yeah. my hands on this guy. This should be pretty accurate. Um, yeah, definitely. But uh, do you use a tournament indicator? What do you use? Yeah, I use a uh, poker tracker for. It. And it works on ignition. Uh, I use the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, there's from like Ace Poker Solutions that uh, yep. like ignition card catcher is what it's yep. called, and yeah, it's an add-on that uh that makes it work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember. We probably asked you this last time, but do you play the the, the tournaments on the uh, the WSOP site? So uh, somewhat, uh, f- uh, but like fairly infrequently, I'd say. Uh, it's just like a really small player pool, and 
than uh, when you look at like the guarantees and and buy-ins versus sure. like what ACR offers. It's like not even close. So it, I think right. they have like I think their Sunday tournament is like a hundred dollar. Uh, it's like a twenty k. So <laughs> I'm sure you have some um, uh, some Wi-Fi issues on it too, where you can't. It's hard to sit with for eight hours with good computer. Right. Yeah. That was that was one of the things I I considered when uh when all this bank stuff happened. And was uh, well, I was like, well, I can just grind micro stakes online and and do that since you're able to buy in, you know, risk uh, a less less lesser dollar amount online and um, uh, then you're alive. But then I was like, well, I mean, one, I don't really have a place to grind online. You know, I want to want to be like final two tables of the tournament and then Starbucks be like, hey, we're closing and you know, be like SOL. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I was just like, and, and plus, uh, in addition, like you'd have to put in like a pretty hefty amount of volume at micros to, uh, to get back to like a decent hourly at that. So I decided not to offer that option. Yeah. yeah. So how about, out, how about outside poker? Are you just a fucking poker ninja, ninja right now? This is, this is where all your focus is or do you? Uh, no, not, uh, not, not entirely. I think it, I think it's good to have a uh, balance in life. And, uh, I think if you just, uh, live, breathe and sleep poker, then sure. uh, you'll end up getting uh, burned out on a lot of stuff. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty active and pretty involved with my, uh, with my local church here and do a lot of stuff with them on a weekly basis. And then, um, pretty, uh, pretty active outdoors. Uh, like to go hiking, try and go hiking like out of Red Rock or Mount Charleston, at least once a week or every other week and um yeah you just like do stuff outdoors and then there's a pretty and then uh, in the summer you can go to the colorado river uh like once a week or so and yeah uh, stay like pretty active outside of that okay i thought you were gonna say well i i, I sometimes juggle ping pong balls inside the prius but sounds like <laughs> yeah a, a lot more than that sure uh i i, I try but the ceiling's too low <laughs> okay that makes sense yeah it, it, was, uh, it, it doesn't really happen very often, but like one time, one time I I, I woke up uh, and uh, I think I remembered. Some, I think I was like late for something or whatever it was. But anyway, like I sat up like really quickly and just like instantly like, banged my head on the ceiling. I was like, oh god, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right on. Well, um, I've got a hand from a listener. Do you guys have any uh, strategy hands? I, I posted it on Twitter, Steve, but if we want, we can go over the one pot, which uh, was pretty, that I played, which was kind of interesting, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up here on my, uh, on my little app here, which is kind of fun. The Share My Pair, use that, Steve, at all, if you want to send a hand to someone. Oh yes, I have seen that. I haven't personally used it, but well, I've read probably uh, two dozen hands from it, so I'm, I'm familiar with the software. Um, hold on, Steve. I'm sorry. I'm still still trying to find where the hand is here. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, in other news, um, yeah, I've been uh, uh also writing uh somewhere. Um, Poker News published uh, another article of mine this morning. Which uh, which is pretty neat, like just like a a year interview of uh, like my first year in Vegas and uh, the roller coaster that that was. I saw that on your uh, Twitter account. What um, no. wh where's your blog at? Where can people? Find I'll have your to check blog? that out. Uh, yeah, so I uh, I also keep a thread on uh, uh on uh, two plus two. I'll send it to you um on Skype and you can uh, put it in the show notes. I guess it's uh, okay, cool. go go. It's under uh, Las Vegas Living and the communities for um. It's like going pro and uh, moving to Vegas is the thread. So I started uh, when I first moved out here. I was I was keeping up with that uh, pretty daily and um, and responding to everybody. And now like uh, you, I just hit over two uh, K subscribers on YouTube and a hundred thousand views and uh, getting pretty. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been um that's been that's been pretty good. Um. Uh. Just been putting a lot of a lot more uh, work into the editing uh, side of things and, and really trying to put out uh, a more quality and professional product, which has been met with, uh, with, uh, with pretty, with pretty good results and seen like a pretty good, a pretty big uh, spike in growth for that. 
So most of my stuff is on uh, now YouTube or uh, Twitter and Instagram. And so I, now I've resorted to, I think, just like updating that thread just like once a month and responding to people on that. So they can like kind of keep up with, on, with me on there. But um, yeah, for like day to day stuff, like Twitter, Instagram is much better. Okay. Okay. okay yeah, Steve, Steve, I'm sure I'll put links in the show notes because I definitely want to check that out. I will. Uh, okay. Uh, Steve, this is from a 5 5 game. And this hand is kind of interesting. For First of all, the session was interesting in that I was into the game uh, for my third buy-in. Actually, more. I, I was into the game for like 4,600. Just awful day. And I was down to 900, and then I won some pots, and then I won a massive like 7K pot with a guy when I called a 4-bet with pocket 10s and flop top set. And he got we got it all in against his aces, and I held. Okay. So this hand starts, and I have seven thousand two hundred dollars in front of me. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of um, yeah. This hand is sort of interesting because uh, just how deep we were in a five-five game was unusual. But I have um, seven thousand two hundred in front of me, and I am on the cutoff with Ace Queen off. Yeah, okay, it's folded to you. It's folded to me. This is a five five ten game. This is a straddle, uh, and uh, and of course the games are. I make it uh, forty dollars. Okay. And the button calls, and on my share my pair thing, I wrote random loon. Um, <laughs> describe the player. <laughs> he had four thousand three hundred in front of him. He had got me to fold aces a couple hands earlier on a paired board. Um, one of those probably a bad fold but i'm like you know i'm gonna get this guy later i don't I, you know i bet the bet the flop and i decided he was gonna call bet bet on the turn i think whatever i made it probably 175 on the turn and he made it like 800 oh. and i folded he's like i you know i bluffed you there he's talking this guy's a vicious like older dude i don't know someone was like that's like one of the who played with him a bunch he's like he's just bad news every you want him there because he's throwing money around but anyways, he's like, I got more money. He's like, I got money. None of this matters to me. Da da da. So, um, you know, that could be. Yeah, I, this is the first time I played with him, and I had been playing with him less than an hour. But anyways, that was okay. he, he, he. He was seen, he was loose and liked liked playing pots and was not afraid to play for stacks. Uh, the button also calls. Uh, this one guy who's you know the last two months has played a lot there. He's like. Oh, wait, uh, hang on. You said you were in the cutoff with Ace Queen. You made it forty. Then the button, who was around. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Called. This guy. I'm sorry. Uh, let me look at this closer. Yeah. Then the small blind also called. Okay. Small blind. And the small blind is this guy. He had three thousand nine hundred in front of him. Um. Okay. So he was deep too. This guy's played a lot over the last few months. He's an ex-lawyer who's now like an investor guy. He loves poker. He rarely quits a game. He'll be there till we're five in the morning. I get you know. Uh, basically almost like a semi-pro, although he, he's a losing player, I think, for sure. But, um, again, he's willing to play big pots, put in big big bluffs. Uh, the, the He puts you in tough spots, for sure. Okay. But uh, the pros certainly want him in the game, just because he gives action a lot of okay. time. Although recently, you know, eventually, obviously, most of the smart amateurs, and, you know, this guy's smart, realize that the biggest problem is if you just play too many hands. So yeah. he he's definitely playing less hands than he was a month ago. Big okay. blind fold, big blind folds and the button calls. The button has about twenty seven in front of him, twenty seven hundred, and he's a he's a he's the top pro there, one of the top pros. Wait, the button or uh, you, you're talking about the, the guy that straddled ten? I said I thought uh, I said the straddle. Yeah, the straddle calls. Oh, the straddle calls. Okay. Straddle I raised calls. forty. We get three callers. Sorry, okay. but small blind and straddle. Okay. And the flop. So what do we have in the pot? Uh, one one seventy. Am I reading that right? Um. Uh, yeah. What one sixty five? You got the one sixty five. Okay. Yeah. The flop is Ace Queen Ten with two hearts. It's the Queen of Diamonds, and I have the Ace of Diamonds and the Queen of Hearts. So I have top two pair, um, and you know backdoor backdoor flush draw. Okay. And it's on. It checks, uh, it checks to me. Okay. Um, what what are you thinking here, Andrew? In terms of, uh, I assume you're betting here every time. Yeah, I like a I like a bet here. 
Um, you know, it's going to be a uh, board that hits you pretty well, and you sh- you're probably betting here a lot, and then this is... Uh, and then uh, definitely... S- uh, and then you have some, you know, multi-way like this. You have some p- potential um, draws out there that you can get value from. Uh, worst Ace X, worst Queen X, uh, and straight draws, and worst flush draws. Although those are kind of discounted. Um, and yeah, I think I think we should be betting here. I think like if we were like heads up, I think or something. There's a lot of merit to checking, but multi-way, I think uh, I think you should be betting here almost every time. Um, and what's your sizing into 165? And that was my question. Yeah, yeah. For sizing, hmm. Uh, I think uh, I think you can go around. Uh, I think right around half pot is fine. Maybe a little bit. Maybe maybe size a little bit down. Uh, a little under half pot. Something like uh, one sixty five. So like uh, like I think anywhere from like seventy to ninety is okay. What are you guys? I think? was thinking the exact opposite in this spot. Just a okay. lot of it, a lot because of the villains. And somebody, although I, I don't really have, it's, I don't, not just for protection, but these are the guys that never folded an ace, probably never folded a queen. My, mm-hmm. and then somebody, somebody else has a pair on this board a lot. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and isn't, isn't going to fold. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was my reasoning for thinking betting big is good here. Plus we have three, like I said, heads up. There's a chance somebody's you know drawing dead and has crap, but against three players, I figure somebody has something, and let's make them put some chips in when I have the best hand. Yeah, if the, yeah, if there's uh, yeah, if the villains in the hand are 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 just likely to call a you know a bigger bet as they were a small bet. Then yeah, then obviously I think there's a uh, there's a lot of value in in sizing larger. Yeah, I was thinking like one ten to one thirty, but maybe that's too big. I I bet one twenty five. Okay. okay. I like my sizing. The button raises to four twenty-five. Mm. Mm-hmm. The um, random now, like I said, this guy likes to bluff. Um, I don't I, I like. I like. I said I call him random loon, but it is a four-way pot. So I think he probably has something here. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it, it wouldn't be the crazy if, if I saw him come up with two black sixes here. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the most stunning thing I've ever seen. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, I I was. Um, but I, if uh, yeah, I I mean I didn't really range him at the time. It's just he raised, and if he folded back to me, I was going to have a decision whether to call or to raise and get ready to play for stacks with a guy who might be willing to play for stacks with worse. Right. Yeah. Um, and here's where things get interesting. The small blind makes it. I'll have to replay this hand here to, be, to uh, my my little phone to see how much he made it. He raised to nineteen fifty, nineteen hundred fifty dollars <laughs> for you know almost exactly half of his remaining stack. Nineteen fifty. So he's got thirty nine behind. Yeah, half of them. Uh, yeah. um, what's the straddler do? The straddler folds, and now the action is back on me. Now, yeah, this is just the here's the obviously the issue is to range them here, and if you take aces and queens out of their range, right, for the most part, maybe you can't always do that. Maybe the button has queens. Um, I still think it's very highly unlikely. So this is when it got back to me. This is what I was thinking. Um, pocket, you, po- obviously, pocket tens and Jack King are the two hands I'm worried about here. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I folded pretty quickly, and a lot of it. I, I, this is kind of the question I have for you. I mean, I don't know if you're stuck in a session and then you get up. If you are no longer more risk averse. Yeah. So this is basically if I was into the game for fifteen hundred. I think I might go with it here and think, mm-hmm. well, even if I lose, I still have 3000 left. I'm still up, you know, but I, I was in, this was a brutal session, which somehow, you know, I got lucky and dug myself out of. And, um, I'm just not going to play, 
even though these two, I, I should, like I said, the first guy ran the balloon. I, I have no idea what he has. The second guy, Paul, I'm sorry, I should, probably shouldn't give his name. Um, I have seen him play draws. <laughs> I, I have seen him play, play draws like this where he's just, he, he's just willing to go with a flush draw. Um, so I, I definitely thought he had a fair amount of flush draws in his hand range. And there's p- times where he's just going with a flush draw where he's pretty much gambling because it's um, – I can't remember the details. He played a similar hand like this where he went with the flush star, where it was pretty clear he was going against the villain who had a very strong range. Mm-hmm. Where he, wasn't, he, he wasn't really getting any folds or anything. He was just willing to gamble with it. But certainly, you, you can't take King Jack out of their range. Um, so like King Queen of Diamonds would be a reasonable hand for him to do this right. with. Oh, you can't have King Queen of Diamonds because the Queen of Diamonds is on the flop. All right. Oh, yeah. So, hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, the uh, although I did think um, there's a chance they might f- also flat or think afterwards with with the nuts, with the straight here. But that's yeah. I mean, for them on this board, it probably doesn't make sense. Somebody has a big ace to go with it. But um, yeah, quick. It does uh, the fact that I have the queen of hearts and block the flush. Would that change? And would that make you a little bit more likely to call or fold? Does that tweak? Maybe be more likely to fold because you're taking out. Uh... Some of those uh, flush draws. Yeah, they're more likely to have a value hand as opposed to a draw because right. of that. Okay. So, that's what I'm um, Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's it's, a, it's a, not all that situation where your your absolute uh, hand strength is pretty strong, but your relative hand strength to what's going on in the pot is uh, not that great, and um, yeah, you block some of the draws that they could do this with. Um, you, and yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think I, I think I'd uh, I think of, I think of, I can get definitely get behind a, a fold here. Um, you know, like you said, the the button could be doing this with uh, with a variety of stuff, but to to limp limp three bets uh, in a four way pot, uh, you just kind of have to question like how ballsy is this guy to to do this with. Uh, with uh with a fire you know as a bluff yeah yeah but, uh, i mean yeah you know he could have the ace 10 or pocket 10s i think you're right i think we can pretty much take queens and aces out of uh out of these guys' range but yeah I, yeah i agree I mean, too <clears throat> yeah i think this is pretty heavy towards king jack pocket 10s ace king even ace king that's a ballsy move to do that with the uh, ace king there um, I, I, yeah, I'd fold Again, th- these are two guys with a lot of money who who could walk away, who could lose an eight thousand, ten thousand dollar pot. It's yeah, probably it'd be fine. It's not um, going to have the same impact on them that it has on me for sure. Um, that's one thing. Um, so I fold, and the big blind, the the cra- the loon, um, utterly distressed. I I can't fold this. I can't fold this. I can't fold this. Um, although he looked very close to folding, finally calls after <laughs> about after about ninety seconds. And the turn is I forget. It's let me let me see. Like to look, it's like a six of clubs or something. And the small blind just shoves it in there, and the button quickly call, calls. And the river's a queen. Here be. Be, be result oriented, but we didn't need to be result oriented because the button, because the queen d- would not have made a difference. The button had king five of hearts and the small blind had jack eight of hearts and they both missed their flush. So king high won an $8,100 pot. Oh my God. Oh, goodness. Um, so I've never won a $12,000 pot, Steve. I had my, <laughs> I, don't know, I, 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 I don't know about you, but uh, if I called, um, I would have had over fifteen thousand dollars in chips in front of me at a five-five game. Yeah, at a five. <laughs> Three thousand blinds, which doesn't happen, which which doesn't happen every day. No, not a not not free couch buying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can't I, fold I, I, this. I, I can't fold this. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, and, and it went in on the turn. They didn't even try to see if they could get there on the. I mean, the small blind had to shove at that point, and uh, he might have read the other guys having a flush draw, 
And the other guys, I mean, at that point, I guess he's priced in for his flush draw or, you know. Yeah. Well. He has nine, nine outs. I mean, not really. He, he still needs probably 20, 25% equity. 25% equity, which he doesn't quite have. But, I mean, he's not folding. Um, so, yeah, I jumped out of my chair, of course, made I told everyone I fold the pocket aces just for theatrical purposes. And uh, <laughs> yeah. the next day, one guy, the, the next, uh, I, and then I admitted I had ace queen. And one guy's like, why'd you waste your our bloody time with that story? You kept going on about it. Um, anyways, it was pretty funny. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, what, results oriented what might have been. That could yeah, have been, it could have been like, or I mean, it's almost close to got to be a record pot at, in the, at that level. In this mm-hmm. case, yeah, I, I, I think I've so. seen people. I've definitely seen people cash out for over ten thousand in that game at least four or five times. Yeah, well, that's, that's. I did see one guy a, get it up. It's quite a lot. We got one guy who's a legend who just won't get it. He played once for for twenty four straight hours, and he came and he he got he had it up to like seventeen thousand. You know, at night it probably went to five, five, ten, twenty or something at night. You know what I mean? Big pots, and then yeah. he finally lost all that and and bought in like seven more times and left down fifteen k after oh my one goodness. hour session after twenty four hours. Oh man, the forty eight <laughs> hours. Um, oh jeez. But uh, that's not a normal game there. Once every three months it happened. Like I said, this wasn't a normal spot, just how deep people Yeah. Were. But uh, I, 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 I polled all my friends, and um, nobody said it was an easy call. A few people leaned towards, well, I would call there against these guys. Yeah. And a couple guys did say easy fold. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah I, it seems like you, you've had a... This is like the first situation where we've we're, we're on the on on the podcast that you've we, we've brought up these multi-way pots and and uh in a like a decently strong hand like top two or something uh against and then it gets three bet on the flop and uh and we fold and they they both end up having draws and uh you know like just and then we question like how, okay how how often does that happen um. Yeah, I think the vast majority of the time this is a fold. I yeah. Think. How much do you want? There's there's times if there's a guy there who's just like, maybe I do it perversely the wrong way, but especially when you're deep stacked, you know, these games are, especially at night, it kind of plays like a 5-10, and it's not, it's not uncommon where you're, you're just going to, to flops with 500 big blind effective kind of shit, you know? But like, there's one player specifically who's OA just three bent relentlessly, and I so just want to play for stacks against him. I'm just kind of bleeding off chips, waiting for that monster hand, where, you know, he three bets pocket tens, and rather than four betting where he's he might just go go with it with king jack off. You know, I'm trying to kind of reduce variance. I call and then just fold on the king high flop. You know, I've just pissed away 150 bucks there maybe. Um, I don't know. I, I, do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm saying? Where I, I guess when you have like the, the random loon, as I say, um, you're you should I should be taking these spots rather than well, let's get a spot where he's really crushed, where I know I have him. Yeah. I mean, th- th- this spot maybe isn't a great example of that because the other players in there, it's a three way pot that so much money involved. But. Um, yeah, these games are so crazy at night, but there's times where I'm just, you know, keep calling three bets and, you know, just rather than playing my draws aggressively, let's get there. And I'm slowly, I'm, I'm kind of over an, an hour or two. I haven't played a big pot, but I'm down a buy-in or I'm down 2000 bucks just because mm-hmm. I haven't totally smashed the nuts kind of thing. I don't know. I, I guess any time you're waiting to just get monster hands and get paid off, you're probably not playing great poker. Is that is that a fair assessment or... Um, I mean, in in uh, certain games, it it can. Have, uh, I've been going through uh, Jonathan Little's uh, cash game book, which I really like him. Uh, he just he takes down uh, the down uh, uh, situations, and uh, he's really good at teaching a lot of uh, exploitative uh, play, uh, which is uh, what you do at, in uh, in low stakes. So, um, yeah, uh, he's uh, yeah, in, in in some games he's uh. He says, "Yeah, like if everyone's just, uh, um, uh, you know, like really crazy and just, uh, and 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 nothing you do has uh, has full equity with any of your your drawing hands or things like that, then yeah, then you just just wait for a big hand and and get paid off." 
Right. Like sort of, sort of what I, I do at the commerce because they um uh like the, the commerce has at least for the lower buy in stuff, um uh they all start really short stats. Like their 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 two three is a hundred dollar buy in and then their three five wow. is a two hundred dollar buy in. Um, even their five five is only a hundred bigs deep max that you can get right. to uh, to but, to five hundred. Um, but people are, people yeah. are playing stacks like with every other hand. Oh yeah, all all the time, right? Yeah, there's yeah, and so there's not unusual. People will get into that game for five, six, seven buy-ins, and then people will also have stacks of five, six, and seven buy-ins as well. <laughs> Uh, so you're, yeah, you're kind of handicapped uh, when you when you're starting out with uh, like 33 eggs at first, but then you just yeah just wait for a premium hand double up, and then and then all these guys are used to playing you know 30 big blind poker, and so none of them know how to play 100 big blind plus. Right. Once you get. Do you have you ever um, quit a like a just a great game because you were up you know you're buying for 300, you're up to 1700, and people. There's guys with 1,700 in front of them who are just playing crazy lunatic crap hands aggressively, but you know just in, you, just because you don't want your aces cracked by four or seven off, mm-hmm. you know you're like okay, this is my first winning session in a week. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good uh, question, uh, and I think a lot of people um, a lot of people do the. A lot of people in poker do the to do the opposite of what we should do. Like when when we're stuck, we 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 have this mentality of oh I, I have to get it even. Just let me get back even. Okay, I'm in for eight hundred. I have five hundred in front of me. Just let me back another three hundred, and then I'll be then I'll be good, and then I can leave. And then then once we're once we're up, you know, thousand dollars, we're like, hey man, it's a good night, you know, like a few hours of work, you know, made a thousand. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, let's, let's call it a night, man. Let's let's good. Let's let's book the W, you know. Uh, whereas you know your deeper stack, so you should be able to realize your edge even larger, and um, you know, and uh, and should be uh, have a have more incentive to play even longer. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't say that I I always do that, and um, uh, definitely, especially when I'm I I don't know uh, I don't know if I've really left any great games because I was because I was up. Um, usually, if the game is still like really, really juicy, then I'll then I'll then I'll usually stay as long as as long as I'm not like crazy tired. I, like um, uh, sure. the, the the night of the like Mayweather McGregor fight, like I was I uh, put in a 16 hour session at Bellagio, and uh, it was like 9 a.m. and I'd been playing all night and uh, and the game was still pretty good at 9 a.m. But I was just I just was having trouble keeping it open and I was like I gotta go. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, uh, but definitely, definitely like mediocre games. I've I've done that a decent amount where, uh, you know, I've been up uh, a couple hundred bucks or something, and after one or two hours, and then look around and like, man, this game isn't that good. Um, I don't know of uh how likely I am to play big pots in this game, so I'll just go ahead and take the ones that I have one and just um you know go uh look for another game. There's one guy in my casino who's um. Who's like a notorious rat holer? I don't know, Steve. Do you know that that rat term? Rat holer? No. What's that? Uh, Andrew probably does. Like rat hole. You know, like the rat jumps out of his yeah. hole to grab some cheese. This would be like people online who just immediately just like win a big hand and immediately get off. Yeah. Go to a yeah. different yeah. table. Go to yeah. a different table and buy in it's short. So run. there's a guy there who plays hit five run. five. If he's up a thousand dollars, if the game's real good, he'll stay. But sometimes the game and the must move is better. And of course, you, if you leave one, if you leave five five to go to two three, you can't get back on five five for an hour. Okay. Uh, but um, I mean, this guy does this very immaculately, and seems his timing is always perfect. He's 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 always grading the the table and what he has in front of him. So, anyways, he's always going from five five to two three and back and forth. And you know, maybe he's looked at with some hostility by some of the five five guys, but um, it works for him. He's doing well yeah. with it. So maybe that's something I should uh, be looking into doing more often. Yeah. I mean, just the fact that it's called rat holing is obviously. Bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you seen have you seen that uh, have you seen that that thing now that they have on uh, on on ACR Steve of this uh, this rat hole game on free cash? No. Yeah. So they have it all the way from uh, all the way from like. Tw- uh, 20- an L 
to I think like five ten, maybe maybe twenty five fifty, but I know at least five to five ten. And so you you you, it's a mandatory chain of of ten bigs. So you can only only, only come in for ten bigs. So even at five ten, okay. so you buy in for a hundred bucks. Um, and uh, and then once and then once you play. Um, you obviously usually you uh, you, you double up and, and get uh, uh, to a deeper stack, and then once you play this game, then when then once if you leave if you end up leaving like say you bought into one two uh, in you know you buy, it's twenty bucks and then uh, you you have like a hundred you end up leaving with like one hundred twenty and you go and play that game later in the week you whatever you left the game with you have to sit back down with. So, so if I left the game with 120, then I had to buy back in for 120. Uh, for that's for seven days. Uh, whenever you leave the game, otherwise you have to leave the game for eight days, and then you can buy in for for ten bigs again. Huh. Interesting. That uh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my friends and I were doing it the other night at, at 25 and L. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's uh, a. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, sort of a degen driven uh, market, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna grind after we uh, finish the pod. I uh, I might experiment with that one a little bit. That sounds like fun. Uh, there we, we were on last night. There's there's a guy sitting with five grand at one two. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a hell of a run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of my first sessions at the two five, I actually Steve uh, had it run up to almost four thousand dollars, and uh, I, fu- I left with like twenty nine hundred, like one bad bluff, and I forget what else. But uh, yeah, I'm still down a hundred dollars this month, by the way. And we've discussed just in the last two weeks here, I have had <laughs> seventy five hundred in front of me and four thousand. It tells you what kind of poker I play. I vary. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're yeah you're. Uh, your standard deviation is uh, it's pretty yeah. high, it seems like. Yeah, that's. Um, but I was just going to say for the, I'd rather have someone rat hole than I've ever. I'm sure you've seen this before, where someone who's maybe he's stuck or whatever wins like a massive pot, and they they're you know they're going to stick around for 15 minutes and not play a hand. <laughs> yeah. Just get up, just get up and give the seat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're yeah, folding yeah, and look at they're looking at their you don't, chips. You know, you have to stay for your image that you're yeah, going to hit. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's like they're looking at the clock. Oh, <laughs> man, I'm tired, oh, you know. I have to wash uh, my socks. <laughs> yeah, so it's like my one buddy was giving thing in the morning. <laughs> my, my, my one buddy was was doing it we actually said that to the one guy. He's like, "Man, um, are you just gonna sit here now and watch the dust dust gather on your chips, or what? What do you think? You know, so, <laughs> yeah, he, it, this guy won a big hand, and he he was not gonna he was not gonna put another dollar in the pot without aces. You know, I mean, I guess if the guy's bad, you want him to stick around because he might get aces, and you might hit a set, and he might still lose a big one. But for the most part, no action whatsoever. Yeah, I was uh, I was listening to. Uh, um, uh, uh, another podcast, uh, not, not not nearly as good as this one, of course, but uh, uh, thinking in poker was uh, the Brokus was talking, and I think he was playing down in uh, San Diego uh, at some some uh, decent game. I think maybe ten twenty five or something. And uh, he was on the phone. This other player across the table was on the phone with his wife. He's like, "Oh yeah, you know, honey, I'm up, you know, four thousand dollars, and yeah, I'm gonna come home soon." And so you know, hung up the phone, and Brooke is like, "Okay, well, I know how to play against this guy. He's not gonna lose any big pots." <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thanks for that information. <laughs> well, Stevie, I have to run personally. You I don't know. Out. I, 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 you guys can. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if you have another. Another strategy here for Andrew. Uh, okay, but, uh, for but, uh, the listener, if you want to stick around, Andrew. If not, uh, I'll run it on my own. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, okay guys. Cool. It, nice talking right to you, Andrew. Yeah, as nice always. talking with you, Mike. Bye now. All Bye. right, Mikey. Good luck, sir. All righty. Uh, okay, Andrew. I did a um, uh, a um, competition or a, uh, a free giveaway of. Uh, Zach Elwood's uh, live poker tells, and right. I've got the yeah. second uh, winner here. Uh, his name is Bob, so congratulations, Bob. Uh, okay, we'll go into his hand. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll discuss Bob's hand. You want to make final tables? Join Tournament Poker Edge. It's in the name. 
It gives you an edge in tournaments. Watch fun instructional videos and learn from the pros. They have videos of member hand history reviews, tournament strategy and theory, and even stick it to the man with KB and Mark. Go through the free videos, check them out, there's hours of them. When you join the club, you'll get access to almost 2,000 videos. It's a lot of fun and we all just get together and form groups and talk poker tournaments. When you join, save yourself some cash. Use the code HUP month, HUP quarter, or HUP year. Study and learn with other people that are just like you and me. It'll be the best thing you've ever done for your tournament game. I guarantee it. Okay, congratulations, Bob. Uh, Bob writes in and he says, uh, First, I just want to say that I love the podcast. I listen to a lot of poker podcasts and get behind at times where I don't get to listen to them all. I have to say, with your podcast, I always find myself tracking back and working to attempt to listen to them all. The balance between Steve's optimism and Mike's, well, being Mike is always entertaining and interviews and strategy are always helpful. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> or Carlos, Carlos, and Carlooser is always welcome as well. Uh, I also use your code for 64spades.com. Awesome. Um, you know what I really like about that site, too, is their, their breaks are synchronized with ACR. And uh, so it makes decent. it nice because <laughs> Six Four Space doesn't have the volume that ACR does, but they still have some really good tournaments, and the players are just, I mean, you know, I've said before, like they're having drinking contests while they're, while they're yeah. playing. You know, it, it's, it's the kind of room where um, you kind of need to chat in the, uh, in the chat box. You know, mm-hmm. and throw out the nice hand and like, oh, I didn't think you were bluffing there and like that because you keep seeing the same players there. And, um, you know, you need to make sure that uh, it's like a home game, you know. So right, I love having yeah, like one table up of 6-4 and then another three of uh, ACR. And with the synchronized breaks, you don't have to deal with like when you're playing ACR and then an ignition tournament where the breaks are all off, you know. But, right. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, uh, I'm mostly a tournament player, uh, Bob goes on to say. Uh, I participate in a couple of poker leagues in the Chicago area. Uh, one where we send two players to the main event each year and share in the profits, which we've had the past several years. Unfortunately, I've yet to win one of the seats, but I am confident this is my year. Well, good luck, Bob. And hopefully, if you get it, the, uh, the live uh, Poker Tells videos will help you out at the uh, main. The hand I played was in a $55 deep stacked 8K guarantee on Global Poker. Starting chips were 4,000, the tables were nine handed. I was down to 3,400 with the blind levels at 3060, and he's in the hijack. Uh, So that's 55, 58 big blinds, somewhere in there, less than 60. Yeah, 56, yeah. 56. Uh, UTG open limped. Okay, so under the gun, limps for 60. And a player in middle position, min raised to 120. Folds to me in the hijack with 9-7 of clubs. Okay, what um, what are you thinking here, uh, Andrew? Uh, so, he's in the hijack. Um, well, I would, uh, first I would look at uh, what uh, if he has any uh, stats on the players in the blinds? I think that's pretty important. If we uh, end up uh, end up going for a raise or, or or a flat, yeah. I initially when I read this, I was thinking, well, um, I don't know. UTG limps. We get a min raise in middle position. Nine seven of clubs. I'm just going to dump it. I think. Um, Bob uh, says I decided to three bet to four twenty. I thought there was a good chance the button would fold and the blinds would fold and I'd play a hand heads up versus the razor. Worst case, the limper also calls and I can play the hand in position. To my surprise, the button and the big blind called while everyone else folded. So there's 1470 in the pot. I have 2980 in my stack. The button has 3800, so he's got his covered. Uh-huh. Um, and the button hasn't been super active thus far at the table. I put him yeah. on a fairly wide range, including all pocket pairs, big suited aces, a variety of suited connectors and one gappers, along with ace queen and ace king off. The big blind had 1800 after calling, and I put him on all pocket pairs through jacks, figuring he'd four bet queen queen along with ace king and ace queen suited. 
he may have four bet with Jack Jack or 10 10 as well, but that was my starting point. I feel that assigning ranges for my opponents as well as understanding what my range is to my opponents is a part of my game that needs the most work. Feel free to shed my range assignments. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I'm not really looking to three bet with many hands in this spot when we have a UTG no. and then a middle position. Yeah. Uh, min rate, unless, a, unless I'm nutted, really. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I agree on the, yeah, especially from the hijack. Um, you know, if uh, I think there's a little bit more, a little bit more value on, uh, if you're on the, on the button and this, um, and just have a, and have, have like some really weak players in the blinds and you think you're just going to get heads up, uh, a lot of the time. But, um, yeah, when, whenever you, whenever you're putting in a raise, especially when you're not on the button, you need, I uh, think the, the like three important factors to look at is uh is who's who who's who's behind you or like especially like who's on the button and what are their stats uh and then who are who's in the blinds is a pretty big thing and then the original opener as well and uh and to take all that into consideration as opposed to just thinking that oh well this is a you know uh a, a pretty good it, this is a hand that can flop well hit, hit, hit a lot of boards and you know can, can and can not only has a range advantage but uh you know uh, also um can make can make a, a a pretty strong hand at times but now like you're playing a pretty bloated pot you're not that all that deep so you're likely not gonna be able to realize uh all of your equity here and then you're not, you don't even have total position on the hand yeah 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 i agree i like three bet spots a lot more when i'm in the cutoff for the button and let's say the hijack raises and then I've got something like, uh, let's say he's in the cutoff, we're in the button, and you know you've got like ace three offsuit. Right. Now you've got an ace yeah. blocker. You've got, uh, you know, like you said, let's say the uh, the blinds are pretty weak and they're mostly folding. Um, I think you have a real chance of taking down the pot when you got something like this. Or yeah, like and you're playing against offsuit. wider ranges as opposed to only gun limp and min rays. Exactly. Yeah. And then now we're bloating a pot with nine high. Um, yeah, this does flop pretty easy. You're, um, you know, nine, seven suited, but, um, yeah, I just don't like it as a three bet. I think you'll find a lot yeah. more success, Bob, if you are, are three betting light in the spot where you're more than likely going to have position. So you're in the cutoff or the button and you've got a later position or maybe a middle position opener, someone that's, yeah. that's wide and you can be pretty certain that the, the blinds behind you are going to fold. Yeah. And, and uh, then... Uh, and then to, um, as far as like sizing goes as well, this is a relatively, there's already 270 in the pot. Um, so this is a relatively, this is almost effectively for what's in the pot. This is almost like a fairly small raise as well for, for, for generate, as far as like generating fold equity, I don't think the sizing really gets it done a lot. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Okay, Bob goes on to say the flop came 10 9 7 with the 9 7 of diamonds, and we've got 9 7 of clubs. Oh, you didn't so, tell me we were going to flop two pair. It was a good move. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was great for you, <laughs> Well done, Bob. <laughs> Retry. So, just, just, just edit out that, uh, that last uh, part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind you, so, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Bob says, uh, I flopped bottom two pair in a three bet pot. Yes, we did. Uh, big blind shove for 1800. Um, so he overbets the pot slightly. I thought this was strange and weighted his range towards flush draws from his range, uh, with sets possible, uh, less likely, uh, with me holding the nine seven cause we blocked those. Um, I decided to shove as I'm not folding. And if I call the 1800, I'll only be left with, 1180, uh, and I would have to call it the button shove. I figured the button would fold most of his range, except the strongest draws, pairs plus, and over pairs. He ended up calling with a non four bet ace ace no diamond. The big blind shows queen 10 for top pair backdoor flush draw. Great result as I got the money in good, even though the result was poor with the 10 on the turn, losing the main pot to trip 10s and the side pot with a better two pair. Uh, anytime you have bottom two pair, you know you're vulnerable. Amen. Um, any input or thoughts is appreciated. I've been trying to incorporate more of these late position three bets into my game, both live and online. Uh, cool. 
Yeah, I think the main lesson to get from this, and, and tell me what you think, Andrew, is just uh, spots to three bet and spots not to. And, yeah, you know, we got We got lucky and we hit it here. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything you can do but get it in when uh, when you flop out of two pair on that board. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> it, uh, um, yeah, I think you'll find a lot more success with three betting later position to middle to late position openers with hands that have like blocker value. And then of course your netted hands too. Of course you're going to three bet there with Kings and aces and Queens and Jacks and stuff. But if you could throw in things that are, you know, fewer, um, suited connecting hands and more hands that are like King queen offsuit, um, ace Jack off, uh, ace three off, you know, hands like that, mm -hmm. that have blocker values just by you having that ace, um, takes fewer combinations of those aces, um, uh, takes those out of his range. Right. And I think, I think it'll be a lot more successful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. This is something that, uh, that Jonathan little goes, goes over, uh, pretty, pretty well in, in his book it is, um, it's, it's just, it's just that not just, you know, three betting with blocker type hands. And then, and then when it comes to, to hands like suited connectors and, and drawing hands like that, um, he says a lot of people have this, uh, have this um, mindset that oh I should I should play this drawing hand pretty pretty aggressively because then I have this range advantage and plus it flops well, etc. But um, uh, it little just uh, disagrees with that with that um, theory because it's um, you, you you don't you don't uh, not in addition to not having uh, any uh, to not blocking any other value hands, but you know your your overall hand strength is also pretty weak. So why why build a large pot? With uh, with uh, with uh, with your drawing hand, just you should be happy to keep the small pot pot small, and um, you know, and uh, and and see and uh, control it there until you until your draw, uh, you know, potentially improves. Yeah, exactly. I'm remembering. Uh, I'm taking a page out of uh, Alex Fitzgerald's book, and he says, um, you know, there's four hands that, or there's four things that you want to accomplish as much as possible before you enter a hand and he said you want position you want a big pot and you want a superior hand and you want to be heads up and um he said i try not to do this unless i got like 3.5 out of these four and the superior hand part is the one that's really uh um you know not fit in the mold here and from the hijack, it's, you may not get uh, position as well, and uh, results oriented on this one, we didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and and so it was bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, right on. Well, thank you for the hand, Bob. I will email you, and you'll get your uh, get your link to get the uh, videos. And thank you for coming on, Andrew. I'll throw in uh, links to your blog and uh, your Twitter, and people can follow you there. Yeah, sounds great, man. Uh, right yeah, on. a pleasure being uh, on, uh, as always. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, seemed, it seemed to get uh, decent audio from the parking lot this time, which is, which is always good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> right on. Okay, well, you can find those links in the <laughs> yeah, show notes. If yeah. you want to get your right back on 6-4 Spades, you can do that using all caps, the code HUPOKER, and you'll get some of, uh, get some of your money back that you uh, play with on there. And thank you for tuning in. Here is your weekly motivational speech. Imagine if you got what you want every time. No struggle, no hard work, no challenges, no hard work required. Some of you are saying that would be great. You would be weak. And then when something hard comes up in your life, you wouldn't know how to handle it because you have never gone through anything that strengthens you. You cannot grow without struggle. You cannot develop strength without resistance without challenging yourself, without struggle. Pain is your friend. Maybe not in the moment, but for the evolution of your soul, for the long-term benefit of you as a stronger human being, pain is your friend. If you didn't have failures, if you didn't have struggles, if you didn't have disappointment, you could have no strength, no courage, no compassion. How could you? Those qualities are made from your pain and struggle. 
You are given pain because you are strong enough to handle it. You are given this life because you are strong enough to live it. Because you are strong enough to drive through it, to thrive through it, to inspire others through it. They will look to you and say, he did it. She did it. I have the strength to do it too. You are stronger than you think.